go ahead and get started. So before we uh, get into our math, does everyone have their part two? Because we'll be in the book today. Yes, yeah, you yeah, have your part two ready. We're actually on the first page in our book. And you need a ruler today. So we'll be on this page. Lesson worksheet 71. And you need your ruler. So I'll give you a little a minute to kind of get that ready before we get started. All right, so last week I introduced what's called tally marks to you. Remember, these are tally marks. Usually you use tally marks whenever you're trying to keep score of something or to keep a count of something. You use what's called tally marks. So anytime you have tally marks, an easy way to count them is if you see this diagonal line like this cross, that's a total of five. So all you would have to do is count those by fives. The only time you would count them out by ones is when they're singles, like how these are singles by themselves. But the rest of these, we obviously know are fives because of that cross. So whenever you are marking tally marks, you always do one, two, three, four. But when you do your fifth one, you cross it diagonally. That's how you show that that's five total. That's a set of five. So let's go ahead and count this, this up here. Would anyone like to count it for us? Two, you know, help us out. Okay, Faith, let's go. Okay, so remember, anytime we have a set like this with the diagonal, what does that mean with the diagonal? It means that it's a set of how much? So how do I count it by? All right, so let's try again. Uh -huh. five. So this is five, 10, 10, okay, now I can't count these by fives because they're singles, meaning we count by ones. So from 15, I stopped with five, so I say 16, 16 17, 18. Good, so this is a total of 18 tally marks. Awesome. All right, let's look at this one. I have two sets and a single. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, let's go, Taylor. Well, we're counting by fives. Okay, so this is a one. So I stopped at 10, 11. How many tally marks? 11 tally, 11 tally marks. Good. So this is how we count tally marks. So tomorrow we'll learn how to draw them because we have to be able, just as much as we can write them, we have to be able to draw them as well. So a tally mark, whatever it has a diagonal line, it's a set of five. Terrible idea. No, I don't want to look. Close your book and be patient. Okay, so these are fives. And then whenever you have the ones by themselves, those are the singles you count by ones with those, okay? Let's go ahead and practice some number patterns. So counting by twos, I have 24, 26. Remember your two pattern is two, four, six, eight, zero. Two, four, six, eight, zero. Two, four, six, eight, zero. If you know the pattern, it'll be easy to count. So 24, 26, where am I going after 26? 24, 26. 28, 24, 26, 28. From 28, 30. 30. Dennis, from 30. 32. 32. The pattern starts over again, too. After 32. 34. 34. And then after 34, we would say 30. 34. 36. 36. Remember, the pattern is 24680. 246. Four, All right, so let's count by twos all the way to 36. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40 will be next after 36 and 38, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and next pattern. So we're counting by fives. 
Okay, so I have five, 10. Where would I go after 10? Five, 10, 15, 15 five, 10, 15. 25. Okay. 20. 25, 10, 15, 20. Where am I going from 20? Dennis? 20. 25. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 30. 30. Remember, it's always a 10 and a 5. Zero and a 5. 30. From 30, we would go to 40. Mm -hmm. 35. 35. And then we finish off with. Okay. 40. 40. Good. So let's go ahead and count by fives to 40. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Let's keep going to 100. 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Awesome. So just remember, counting by fives, you always will have a zero and then a five. Zero and then a five. Zero and then a five. Okay, if you remember that, that'll help. It's five numbers away. Remember, skip counting. Why it's called counting by fives? Because you're skipping five numbers. Okay. All right, next pattern, I'm counting by tens, but I'm in the hundreds now, okay? But I am in the hundreds. So I have 110, 110, 120. What would I go from 110, 120, 120, 130? After 130, I would say... 140. After 140, what would I say? 150. After 150, 160. Still counting by tens, just with the hundreds. After 160, I would say 170. 170. So let's count by tens to 170, starting with 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40. 190, you would say 200. That's your next time. I was trying to see you. Do it. 203. No, 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 no. That's, no, that's not counting by tens anymore. Yeah, that, yeah. I'm like, what are y'all doing? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's think before we say. Remember, I always say that. But I'm just saying it. Think about it. All right. Awesome. All right. So let's go ahead. We will now move on to our books. Um, yeah, okay, so that lesson worksheet 71, lesson worksheet 71, okay, so today we are actually going to be moving on to rulers, we're not measuring just yet, today what we're going to practice is how to draw a line segment, okay, so sometimes when we draw lines, the line will have a name, sit down, sit down. We're not doing anything. Lines will have a name, okay? So the line that has a name is called a line segment. A line segment. Okay, let me write that here. Line segment. Usually what it means is two points are meeting one another. So if I have a line here, I have an end point and an end point. I have two points on my line. If I put an A here on this point, and a B here on this point, this is line segment A, B, because it's point A connecting to point B. So this line segment will be A, B. So that's what we're going to practice in our book, how to draw a line segment. I'm going to take it. How to draw a line segment using the points, okay? So before we get into that, I just want to show you how we draw a line first. So whenever you are drawing a line using your ruler, you have to make sure that your ruler is down flat and it's straight. 
You don't want your ruler to be crooked like this. This will not be a straight line. The only time that it's crooked is if the line segments are like that. But if you're drawing a line like how I drew AB, you will simply put your ruler down. It's important that you hold your ruler down with the hand that you're not writing with. And then when you draw your line, you draw the line on top of the ruler, not underneath. You don't want to put it down and then you're doing this. No, you put it down, get it firmly on the on there, on the paper, hold it tight on the paper, and then you will draw your line like this on the ruler. And when I pull it away, straight line. Oh, this ruler has a little more support. But, okay, so you want to make sure that whenever you are drawing, you put the ruler down flat, hold it tight so that it's not moving all over when you're trying to draw. You hold it down with the hand you're not writing with, You'll take the hand that you do right with and you'll draw the line above and take your time, hold that ruler straight so that you can have a straight line. And look at that, straight line, okay? So let's look at 71. So it doesn't matter which side of the ruler we're using just yet because like I said, we're not measuring. When we measure, that will matter. But today we're just drawing line segments. So you can use the smaller number side or even the other side. It's called inches and centimeters. We're getting to that soon. Okay. All right. So I'll let you get that ready in a second. Okay. If you look at the top of your paper, you have a line for your name and date. Well, there isn't a line, but do you see how there's two dots? I mean, a dot, two dots to connect. You see that? So we're going to connect those dots together. So let me show you how we'll do this. Okay. So you get your real ruler. Whenever you have two dots, it's important you place the ruler underneath the two dots. Underneath, look at that, see? Sorry, I'm trying to get it in hold at the same time. Okay, underneath the two dots. Look at that, look how my ruler is underneath the two dots. That's the way you'll draw the line correctly, okay? Not underneath, I mean, not putting the ruler above the dots, but you put the ruler underneath the dots and then hold it down. Just like I showed you on the board, you hold it down with one hand and you'll connect, draw the line. When you do it, let me see it, okay? All right, so you can go ahead and do that now. The lid. And let me see when you do it, you connect. That's, you can do name and date. All right, so you still want to write your words like what? That, that's the back of the paper. Why is one side up and the other side is down? No, it should be like this. See? But you gotta you have to hold it down. But look, put your ruler like this. You have to hold the ruler down. That's important. If you don't hold it down, it's going to the, it's going to move all over the place. Look at this way. Yes, yeah, connect the dots. Just make sure you're matching it up. Let's see. Okay, a little closer for me. I can't see quite well. Okay. Okay, just make sure we're holding those rulers tight so that the lines aren't shaky, that they'll be straight, okay? So it's important to hold a little down, Dennis. I can't see. Oh, no, no, no. Connect the dots, the dot from name to the dot on the end. Let me, let me see what you all right so look then it's here see that look then it's the dot here to the dot here to make a line like this okay you see now all right hold it. Look, that's the problem we're not holding it down hold it down with this hand this line all right, now draw a line from this dot to this yeah, one. There you go. Now just go. Keep going. Follow the ruler. Keep going. Okay. Finish. All right, next. So you're going to write your words now, but you're doing them in boxes now. We're not doing them across like this anymore. We're going to write it down. So your first word is great. So what you'll do is you'll write so you have your lines. You'll do great. 
You may, but you may not. But as of now, we does not get one, so that we can just worry about what we have now. So you do great. 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 See, it's great. This one, this one, great. I need seven times today. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for her to show you what we're going to do. This might be So after you do great, you'll box it up to show that that's great. Then you go to your next word. Yeah. So B, same thing. So G. You get, so you get what I'm saying? Yeah. That's yeah. how we write our words. Why you write so fast? And cursive. And these, please make sure your letters are formed. Do we put um? Do we put um? Numbers also. Yeah. No, you don't have to because um. That's why. Okay, so we have our two lines. Okay. Um, we did not have to do the bottom because there's a certain way we have to do the bottom. Yeah. So you might you're gonna have to erase that. Yeah, I had only wanted you to do the top. I didn't ask for the bottom to be completed just yet. All right, so once we have our lines for our name and date, let's go ahead and begin on the bottom. We'll connect our line segments. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. So we have one that's done already for us. As we can see, A is connecting to E. So that's line segment AE. So we'll go ahead and start our own, okay? So let's start with point A. And we are going to try to connect point A to point B. So what that means is you're going to get your ruler, okay? You'll start at point A, and you'll curve your ruler all the way to where it matches with point B. See that? But make sure that the points are, uh, 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 the points are, you're able to see them, okay? They're visible. You can see them. As you can see, look at that. I have point A down here and point B. So I'm going to connect point A to point B like this. So look, I'm going to match the ruler like this. So go ahead and do that. Start on point A and then turn your ruler to where it matches to point B like this. Yep, just like that. And then once you get it, now you can draw your line. But you got to turn this one down a little bit like that. Okay, yeah, you draw it down. Hold it right here. Look. No, hold it with the other hand. Yeah. Move this like but this. you see, you want to hold it tight so it doesn't move. Like this. No, I said A to B. How about you do yours nine times, okay? Since we can't stop talking. So nine times. Me too. No, I'm talking to Amina and Carly. Yeah. So you're connecting point A to point B. So get your ruler. Get your ruler. And you want to connect A to B like this. So now draw a line. Hold your ruler down with your other hand. Hold it right here. So you have to hold it yet yeah, in the middle so that it doesn't. Like, like that. Now draw a line from A to B. No, no, no. Tra trace along the ruler. Hold on. Let's see. Trace along the ruler. Trace along the ruler. Mm. See, when you trace along the ruler, it gives you a straight line. Let me see, Dennis and Avaya. If y'all have it done. A to B. Let's see. Gray or green right here and blue right here. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have A to B. So let's go ahead and connect our next line. A and B. So now you'll hold it down and then draw the line from A all the way to B. If you have to trace on the rule, so make sure your pencil is so It's fine, it's fine now. But make sure for the next one that your ruler is touching the line, that your pencil is touching the ruler. 
That's how you get a straight line. All right, so that's line segment AB because we connected A all the way to B. Next one, let's start with B and we're gonna connect B to C. So go to line, go to point B and connect it. No, 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 nope, using your ruler, go to B and you'll connect it to C and then connect those two. Mine was more organized. See how I need this organized. You don't have to do this over. That's not organized. Look at this. See how they're, I want it like this. That's not neat. No, no, no. You're going to use like three sheets of paper for that. Look at that. You write it straight. Okay. Look at this. Not all over the place like that. You have to start here, draw a line. Start here, draw a line. Start over. the boxes. Yeah, and those boxes are way too big, but that's because you're writing going like this and you're write going straight down. Okay. If you're starting right here, you start here, you start over there. Like, no, that's not gonna work. Get a paper and do it again. It's a shame for third grade. This is not gonna work. So, okay, let's see, B, uh, B, C. Okay, so that's this is my look. These right here, you're supposed to connect here to here. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm just saying. Like, yes. So look, listen, listen. B to C. So you do B all the way to C. Look like this. Now draw the line. Okay. Line B C. We have it, Dennis and Avaya. Yes. No. Dennis, yes or no? I don't. Okay. All right. B C. All right, next we're gonna draw a line segment from C to D. So from C to the letter D. So go find point C connected to point D. No, 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 get your ruler straight first before you draw the line. Make sure your ruler is straight first. See, because you see how you, you have it all over. So you have it on C, but it wasn't on D. You have to make sure that it's on both points. Now draw the line, hold it. Hold it right here. Now draw the line. Okay. It's, still not, it's still not right. It's still not right. Look at this. Look, look. Every time I'm doing this, every time you're doing it, look at this. This is not right. I'm not accepting this. No, I'm not. You're gonna do it right. You're not good. We're gonna keep going through it. You have to start on the same line. You can't start right, right here and then start on the line. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so the last one, obviously, after C to D, will be connecting your last line segment, which is E to D. E to D. So we'll start on E and connect E to D. It's a star. Right I know. I just said that was. I told you. I told you. It's so great. 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 That was right. And it's a star. Yeah, it made a star. <gasps> it made a star. See, I told you all it's a star. <gasps> now I know how to do it. <clears throat> that E was already done today. Yeah. This is how you do it. Yes, okay, so you start there again. See how it's all matching? Mm -hmm. That's not how you spell great. Right. Look at how to spell it. You're not spelling it right. I don't even know what this is. <gasps> Gotta get the handwriting together. Oh, all right, so let's see. So, what shape did it make? A star. A star. We connected all of our line segments correctly. It made a star. So, sometimes in your book, we, since now that we know how to draw a line with the ruler, it will sometimes ask you to draw the actual line. So, just remember how to do that, okay? You'll use your ruler to connect the line. See, like there's one. On your work page today, it says, see, it has a name, but no line. You have, you're going to have to draw it yourself. Okay? Miss Flugent, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? 
Oh, your screen's turned down. I can't hear you. Saying yes or no. Can you, can you hear me now, Dennis? Can you see me? Okay. All right, awesome. All right, so that is our math lesson today. You're drawing a line segment. Let's go ahead and move on to writing. You'll need a list of paper to complete writing. Miss Kuja, can I pass out the papers? Could I? Let's mm -mm. put the news. I'm going to take it. All right. started with our writing. So this week we are going to continue practicing our days of the week inside of our sentences. Okay. So um, since we kind of learned the last week, it should be a lot easier to get through it today. So I have two sentences here on the board. You'll correct them. You can do both of them. So number one says yesterday was Sunday. And then number two says last Tuesday, Eric went to Chili's. A few proper nouns in that sentence that you have to pay attention to. Again, number one says yesterday was Sunday. Number two says, last Tuesday, Eric went to Chili's. So you can do both of them, okay? I'll give you a couple of minutes to work on both of them. Okay, so I'll capitalize first letter L. T and T. T and Tuesday. Second letter T. Second letter T. E and Eric, that's a name, proper noun. One more thing to capitalize, proper noun. C and Chili's, and then I finish with the. Yeah. So that one just had a couple of things to capitalize. All right, so let's do a number three. So you pick a day of the week and create your own sentence using a day of the week. So your own sentence. Okay, so you pick which day. Tell me something about that day. I'm going to 
on Wednesday. Okay, we'll read in a second. Okay, let's start to hear some sentences. Let me hear some of them. All right, let's hear Kinley. Hmm? Monday is school. Okay, on Monday we go to school. Good. Okay, take Monday. Tom his mom and okay, Naraya. I like Friday because we have tests. I like Friday because we have tests. Good. Okay, Faith. I went to Sky Zone Monday. I went to Sky Zone Monday. Good. Okay, Dennis and Avai, do you have your sentences ready? No? Okay, I'll give you another minute for number three to create your own. My sentence says, last Sunday, I had fun. Okay, good. Um, I'm still on number two with the crosses ahead of me. Well, why, why are you going so slow? Um, no, I have to figure out how you make it back to the world. Okay, so while we're waiting, um, we'll be moving on to letter Q on today. So you want to get that ready, letter Q? Q, Q is hard. Oh, yeah. It's really easy. That's fine. I know how to do it. 
Forty girls, y'all are gonna just make it worse for both of you if that's what you want to do. Okay, Miss Bridget, I'm done. Okay, I can hear it. If you ever Monday is my not is not my favorite day. Okay, Monday is not my favorite day. Okay, good. All right, so now we'll move on to letter Q, which is on page 40 in your book. If you're ready to have it done, you can just go ahead and um, do it on a little sleep over the breakfast. All right, letter Q, Dennis, you have it? And guess what? Guess what's super cool? It's, no, it's okay. I'm sure they're fine. All right. So letter Q. So as you can see, letter Q looks a little to like G, sort of, but there's one thing that you do with Q that makes it different from uh, the other thing, the other letters, okay? So whenever we are writing letter Q, we are actually starting on the middle line, just like whenever we write G, okay? So the steps are much, are, yes, you have a question? Page is it? 40. Yeah, page 40. Okay, so the steps are pretty much the same. It's just there are some things that make it a little uh, different. So we start on the middle line when it comes to Q. We always, we do the same thing. We come around, touch the red, close it. We come off the line, but this is where it becomes different. When we come off the line, instead of closing to the front, we close towards the back. Close it, kick it out. That's what makes Q different. We close it whenever we're doing our loop, when it's hanging off, we close to the back instead of the front. So again, you want to curve around, close it, come down off the line, close to the back, kick it out. If you close to the front, it's going to look like a G. And we don't, we're not doing G, we're doing Q. So again, start on your middle, curve around, close it, come down off the line, close to the back, kick it out. Okay, let's practice line one. Q on the table. On the table. Where, where's the top of that pencil? Because it came because it came off. I didn't take it off the phone. Okay, all 
WH says long O. Whole, yes, like when we say the whole thing, whole. Okay, this one here. Okay, WH just says what? Uh huh. What's the word? What? I. White. White. It's good. Okay. Next one here. Okay, Kenley. So C C H. Shh. Our vowel A. What's the word? Catch. So remember, we also have another sound that has the ch sound, which is C H. The way to know which one is which, TCH has uh, will always have a sharp vowel in front of it. Okay, so if you keep that in mind, that'll help you. So if you hear a word that has the ch sound and you don't know whether it's TCH or CH, TCH always has a sharp vowel in front of it. Okay, next one. Next one here. Okay, sounds. WH says. Okay, and vowels. O. Long O. Silent E. What's the word? No. WH says. Who's? Who's? Okay, next one. Okay, go ahead, uh, Faith. WH. WH just says what? And special sound. CH. Charval I E. Which okay, and then the last one, and this is which, like which one do I want to pick? Okay, go ahead. C C H Charval A A. Good, awesome. Okay, so that's special sounds. W H just says what? W H just says and T C H that says. All right, remember we talked about syllables dividing words. Remember a syllable is how many parts are in a word. Usually we'll have to figure out, but some of them we can put lines to divide it. So let's go ahead and look at the first one here. Where would I divide this word here? Okay. Go ahead. Double T's and the word is? Kitten and how many syllables? Two. Two. Kitten. Next one, where am I dividing? Between? Put a line between the Z's. Z's. And what's the word? Puzzle. 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 Okay, and last one, where am I dividing? Two P's. What's the word? Uh, supper, good. And also root words and suffixes. Let's review those as well. Root words and suffixes. So I have the word here, hanged. How do I mark the word hanged? Okay, Dennis. Circle the word ang. Circle E-D. Find the word ang. Hey. 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 Good. Underline the root word. Circle the suffix. Next one. Pulled. How am I marking pulled? Uh -huh. P. Underline under. Underline pull. In in circle E D. Circle E D. And the word is pulled. Next one. Staying. How am I marking staying? Okay. Killing. 
Underline stay. Underline stay. Underline G staying. And last one. Cry. Crying. Good. Awesome. All right. So that's our final lesson. I just wanted to go over root words, suffixes, dividing syllables, and also our new sounds, WH, WH, and TCH off of chart 10. All right. Go ahead and get out your reading. Stepping stones. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Stepping Which is is not contraction. Okay, the snow day. The snow day. I. That's a sharp vowel I. Tim and. I. O R or. Look yeah. at your sound. Fort. Mm -hmm. Ran into the house. Tim was. <laughs> I was he his mom a big Yeah, 
This isn't, that's what I was saying, isn't it? Isn't, he did, yet, he did, did you and Fort has, has life of day, Fort went to life. By the fire. Awesome. Okay. All right. So we're introduced to Tim and sport, right? And so Tim, what was he doing outside? Playing. He was playing in the what? Snow. The snow. The snow, right? And what did he do? A snowman. A snowman, which he was asking mom if she saw his snowman, right? And so who was outside with him playing sport, sport. sport which is his what? Snowman. No, his dog. Oh. His dog. Oh. Snowman. Okay, 23. Okay. 23. It's so much. Fun to play in the snow. Jim said, Next time I will make a snow fort. Maybe I can hide in the fort and throw snow at dad as he comes home. Now, mom and mom have a friend. That I have you can for that. Okay. All right, good. So, so then after when he comes in the house, he had so much fun. And so next time he said he would build a what? A fort. A fort. And what would he do inside of the fort? Well, he would hide and then throw. No, at his dad. And so, yeah. And so mom tells him she hopes he can run fast because what will happen whenever he throws the snowballs at dad? Dad will get him back. Dad will try to catch him, right? Okay, so Tim had fun in the snow. Okay, let's look at 24. E-R says er. Okay, Dennis, could you read this page for us? E-R, er, and you are er, 24. Curl, nerve, turn, sport. Okay, and now you, you can read the sentences and figure out the word. Can you take this verse when they see me being a mess? Where I, I can't hear you anymore. Did you read all three? Okay. Okay, the sentences that are like yeah. underneath the box that you just read, the sentences. So this plant is a, and you have to pick which word is correct. Fern. Fern, okay, the next one. Can you say this Seven. verse, verse, verse? Okay, and then? Nurse. Well, one day she may be a nurse. Okay, good, Avaya, page 25, I, R, R. You can read the words and the sentences. Avaya. Oh, you're on mute? Uh, can you hear me now? Uh huh. Skirt, burr, breath, third, 
and third threats. I R R so threats. No 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 I R R so third. Thirst. 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 Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. And read the sentences and figure out which word goes inside of the sentence. We will not hurt the what? The bird. bird. Okay. Stir the bird. Where's my pencil? Healing. <laughs> God made the. God made the. Tree. Fir. F I R fir tree. It's a type fir of tree. Tree. Okay, and the last one. Forge, fear tree. Okay, okay no. next one. And last one. Plus, Kurt. No, look at, yeah, Kurt. Let and go. First. Yes, first. Okay, good. All right. All right, good. So let's turn the page to the next story, the bird nest. Can I read? Oh, no, sorry. That'll be tomorrow. My bad. That'll be tomorrow. Dang it. Yeah. Oh. Tomorrow is science and social studies. All right, good. All right, so we have one lesson left which is on language and well and then i'll go over your spelling but like lesson we have language all right. all right so remember we've been learning our different types of sentences so we've learned what's called a statement I sentence what kind of sentence is a statement sentence what does it do when we have a statement sentence it what it tells us something and gives us information it tells us something. Can someone give me an example of a statement? An example of a statement sentence. Okay, what you have, Faith? I love my mom. That would be an example of a statement. I love my mom. We have a who and a what. Who, I, what about you? Love my mom. Last week, we learned what's called question sentences. What do question sentences do? Statements will tell you something and give you information. What does a question do? Statements tell us something. What does a question sentence do? It asks something. That's a question. Yeah, it asks something. Question sentences will ask something. Okay, so statements will tell you something and give you information. A question will ask you something. That's why it's called a question. Okay, so could someone give an example of a question sentence? Question sentence. Can I go to, can I go to the park? That's asking something. So questions will ask you something. Statements will tell you something, give you information. A question will ask you a question. And remember, question marks end with a question. I mean, question sentences end with a question mark. Yes, it is. You have a question, Dennis? You're on unmuted now. Can we go to the park? Well, yeah, that is a question sentence. Yeah. Okay. So remember, a statement will tell you something and give you information. That's a basic sentence. Like we said, I love my mom. A question sentence will ask you something. When you want to know the answer to something, you would ask a question. 
question sentences in with question marks. So today we're gonna learn our next type of sentence, which is called a command sentence, okay? So a command sentence is a type of sentence. What's important is it's similar to statements, but you're gonna have to read it to know which kind it is. If it's a statement or a command, a command does something specifically. That's what makes it different from statements, okay? So commands will start with, uh, start with the capital letter and they will end with a period. But what a command sentence does is it gives an order, meaning it tells you to do something. Yes, so command sentences will give you an order or tell you to do something. That's a called a command when it's telling you to get something done. So if I would say, clean your room, that's a command. It's telling you to do something, clean your room, command sentence. If I would say, please, Sit down. That's another command. It's telling you to do something. It's giving you an order. Please sit down. If I would say wash the dishes, that's another command. It's telling you to do something. So anytime a sentence is giving you an order or it's telling you to do something, it is called a command sentence. Clean your room. Please sit down. Wash the dishes. Anytime a sentence is giving you a command, when it tells you to do something in the sentence, it's called a command sentence. Like I said, they seem similar to statements, but they're not. That's why we have to read it. Once you read it and you see that it's telling you to do something, you'll know, oh, this is a command sentence. It is not a statement. So we'll practice some more tomorrow. I just want you to get this written down if you could. Get a paper so that you'll have this on hand whenever you need to practice, which one is which. So I have this up here for you to write. So you'll write statement. It tells us something. Write the example I gave. Then you'll write question. It asks something. Then you'll write the question sentence. Then we'll write the new part, which is called command, which you give you an order or tells you to do something and write the examples. So I'll give you a few minutes to get all of this written down so that you know which type of sentence is which. All right, so that is it for our language. That was all of our lessons for the day. I have the video up if you need to go back over it uh, for anything, okay? All right, so yeah, science and social studies, you'll complete that later or your workbook pages as well. And then we uh, will do our lessons tomorrow. Okay, y'all have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.